Uh, but to start with, we've got to start with this breaking news. It's now been revealed by a number of journalists today, Staffy, that Gareth Southgate is the number one target of Ineos, and they would like him to become the new manager of Manchester United. I hate Lawless, man. His facial reactions are just actually <laughs> pissing me off. Just turn off the <laughs> camera, man. Just turn off the camera. <laughs> it's a... First of all, big up to everyone here. Make sure you guys smash a like on the video. Uh, there, I'm sorry, bro. I'm, I'm I'm not believing it until I see it's actually more concrete. Because some of the sources, listen, I don't know what sources you have. I know you, you have you have quite the connects. But some of the sources I'm hearing about, they're not really that reliable. Miguel Delaney and them, I don't know how reliable these people are. You know, I refuse to believe that we're gonna get him. I refuse to believe, and I've been I've been on this this whole time. I believe I refuse to believe that someone like Omar Barada, who came from a city group, was watching Southgate football, and he said, "You know what? That's the guy." You know, there's no way. There's no way. I I, I refuse to believe that Jason Wilcox, who's sitting there and critiquing the way Ten Hag plays football, and he is like, "You know who's better than you, Ten Hag? Southgate's better than you." I I, I just refuse to believe it. I feel like it's just media talk. I feel it's just because links, because we got um, Ineos and, and, and Sir Jim. If it wasn't a British billionaire, I don't think we would have been linked with them. If we had the Qataris take over, as an example, I don't think we would have ever had these rumors going around. I could be wrong, but I just, I refuse to believe it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue to live my life like that until we find out if the night is going to stay or we get another manager. Until then, I'm, not, I'm just really not entertaining it. There's no way. I hear you. Let me throw this to Lawless. Is that Staffy being realistic or is that a bit of copium there? I th yeah, I think there obviously there is copium. There is some copium. Even there. I could have told you that. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> massive copium there. And, uh, you know, I don't understand. I don't blame you. For me, I want to see it because I think it would be hilarious to see the reaction from the Man United fans. It's going to be but... hilarious when you do straight facts alone on Fridays because I won't be here. You think I'll be here? <laughs> hey, be good. But the thing is, are Man United fans overreacting? Um, you know what I mean? I, I'm seeing that the super chat there just said, you know, it's Ineos and Southgate out and all of that. Like, look, his football is has been dead for England, right? We, you know, we may talk about England squad later. I'm thinking maybe he might play a little bit more attacking with the lineup we've seen. But is there not a, any part of you just goes, you know what? If it happened, you've got no control over the manager. If he's there, give it a chance. Like, we can look at positives of Southgate. I'm listen. I've said if he don't win the Euros, then he needs to be sacked. I think England needs to go in a different direction. But either way, there's some positives. You know, and he's you know how he's worked with this young squad, and you know what I mean the players seem to like him. You know, he, no, he's done well. quite well with England overall. Like, I think he should have got over the line, but big tournaments, big moments. Listen, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be on my first choice for, for, for uh, my it's, club. I get what you're saying. Let me ask you something, Terry. Let me ask you something. Go, go, go. One sec. Lotus, what, I don't know if you know this or not. This is a little quiz for you. When's the last time you think Southgate has managed a club? Was it Middlesbrough like 15 years ago or something, 10 years ago? Exactly. 2009, Middlesbrough, and he got him relegated. Yeah. You're telling me your credentials. As a club manager, is that you managed 15 years ago. Lolas, I don't know what you do in, in, in life. I don't know what like what your job is. But I'm pretty sure if you didn't update your resume for 15 years, the likelihood of your resume getting accepted for a job today is slim to none. When you're telling me the last time you managed a club was Middlesbrough and you got them relegated 15 years ago, I'm sorry to sit here and say this is not a good credential. Even when he say he's done well for England, he has not won anything for England. And he's had arguably one of the best generations in England to win something with. Not to mention that he had a Euros in his backyard where he lost the final to an Italy team that was not even good enough to make the World Cup about a year later. So I'm sorry to sit here and think that this guy is not good enough. But may, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Just saying, you don't give it a chance? So, it so, no, yeah, I'm not I, giving it a chance. No, I'm not. So when you say you're not giving it a chance, what does that mean? Break that down for me. Oh, my God. Are you trying to get me to say, oh, so get it out if he comes in? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking that. I want to, when you say you're not supporting it, I need to understand. Uh, that, that's, you could class that as a, a bit of a, not buzzwords, but a buzz phrase. I'm not backing it. What does that mean, not backing it? 
Well, first of all, I, I wouldn't believe in Enios now because I, Enios right now, get the, they're on a free trial when it comes to me. I, I believe in every, everyone gets a fair chance to prove themselves. Did I want Enios originally? No, I didn't. But they're the ones that bought the, the, the shares from the club. and They have the, all these plans and they came in and said, and I quote some of the stuff that they said, that they're trying to get the best in class in every department. They're trying to get United to be the best club in the world again. These are things that you said. So when you say these things to me, I have to hold you accountable to that. If I say, hey, guys, I'm going to take you out to dinner. I'm going to take you to the best the best steakhouse in New York. And you're like, bet, safe. Stop, you said this to us. And then I take you to some cheap Chinese shop. You're going to be like, what the hell is that? You promise us something and you give us something else. Then you're going to lose trust in me. You're going to be like, next time we're going out for dinner, we're not hitting up stop anymore because his plans are bullshit. That's the same way I'm looking at Ineos. You cannot tell me I'm getting you the best in class and you go get me a, a club manager that no one wants. No one in the... I'm pretty sure if you ask all 20 Premier League teams, sorry, all 19 Premier Leagues outside of United, no one will tell you that Southgate is on their top three list at all. So by that by, by that happening, I, I would I would automatically lose trust in... in, in, uh, in so, <laughs> okay, so I, I understand that. And of the Maradon here says, uh, are you slow, Terry? He doesn't believe... Uh, what's so hard to understand but that's just again saying i don't believe again it's maradon and, and that's why we call you maradon the moron because you're a surface level person it's surface level to say i don't believe asking someone to expand on that what they don't believe in how will that change their reaction towards um, other elements of change at the club how much patience would somebody have all of these things then come i'm trying to understand it's called a conversation if we just had a basic surface level conversation an hour and a half podcast would be finished in about 15 minutes because it would be very closed answers very quick short answers with no challenge we have to create an understanding but obviously married on the moron doesn't get that married on the moron likes things to be short and concise and very ambiguous that way he can never be cornered on an opinion and and, and that's and that's what weak people do I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Everybody knows I don't want Southgate. Like, I don't... Like he's not anywhere near the top top choice that I have. I understand Man United fans that will say, should have kept Ten Hag. But already had people in the comments say, Terry, this is what you get for wanting Ten Hag sacks. You were really going to back this Southgate because I ain't. Again, I don't know what backing someone means. Does it mean you don't celebrate when... Like, I, want, I really want to understand, does it mean you don't celebrate when we win? Does it mean when we do some good things, you don't give him credit, but only criticize the bad stuff? Like, I'm not, and I'm not having a go at you. I'm trying to understand these days what not backing somebody means. I am not backing it on a personal level, but I will back it objectively. So, and I think there's a difference between how I feel about it and being objective. And the reason that I say that is because we don't know the state of Man United. We all have a theory of how bad we are internally right now. Some of us will say absolutely horrendous. Some think it's not too bad. Maybe, just maybe, the club feel they need someone that can that can do what Southgate has done a good job of doing in England, and that's rebuilding a nation that was broken on a footballing level. And he has been integral in helping to fix England from a from the un, sort of the, the under the, sort of the youth levels right through to the under twenty ones and to the first team. I think Southgate has got us to a point where a few years ago now he should have moved on and a better manager come in. There is no doubt about it. So the one area where I, I'm playing devil's advocate here for people to understand that this isn't my full opinion, it's playing devil's advocate. That means I'm uh, mm -hmm. uh, giving a suggestion that maybe they feel they need someone that they trust and that they know who has good communication, who does have a very good track record of helping to fix a really huge institution that's broken. Maybe they feel that step is needed before going to a manager who is classed in the, in the, in the colloquial term as a win now guy. And, and, and as I say, I'm very skeptical of it. The same as you, Staffy. The only thing I'm not going to do is allow it in the first instance to damage trust that I have in Ineos or to not back this rebuild. And when I say back, that doesn't mean agree with every little bit me backing it isn't agreeing with everything they do on a subjective personal level, but it's about being objective and waiting to see the fruits of that labor. And the reason I say that is because they're saying four years time, we have a new manager and we've just won the Premier League. And then what starts to happen is the documentaries and the programs come out and it turns out that the club was absolutely rotten to the core and Southgate played an integral part of building the club up. We then moved on to somebody better and now we're winning again. I would then look back as someone that was angry and getting mad at the beginning as oh, I really shouldn't have done that. I, I maybe should have, do you get where I'm coming from? So there's a part of me that totally wants to say and do what Staffy has just said, because that's how I feel towards Southgate. 
There is another part of me, though, that feels I don't just because I don't understand it doesn't mean I should be angry at it. I'm going to give it some time because I've been asking for these football decision makers to come in. We've had bankers making these decisions before and they've ruined the club. I feel a little bit hypocritical to lose my shit at the first big decision that the football decision makers make. I almost want to let it cook before I go crazy, if, if that makes sense. I don't know. No, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. And listen, I understand if you feel like that. But I, listen, I'm very strong and opinionated. This is just how I've always been. And I feel like I have a level of understanding of the game where I can look at a manager. And I understand everything that you explained around the club. But I'm talking right now, at least on the pitch. I believe that I have a good enough understanding of what this manager has done for eight years in England. I think he's been there for what eight years where I can look at him and I look at what we are as a, as a club and the players that we have and where we're trying to be and look at this guy and I say, no, there's nothing that he can offer me that will improve me on the pitch. All the other stuff is too hypothetical for me. It's too, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if I'm holding, as I said, I'm holding Ineos by the standard that they came out and said that we're going to hold, that we're going to have the club at, which is hiring the best in class. I don't expect him to go get me the best manager in the world in Pep. But they also it's said that, but, 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 having, but to call you out on that is yes, they said they want us, they said they want us to get us to be in the back to being the best in the world. They said, but Matt, they also yeah, said that right it's going to take a lot of time and patience. So this is the this is the problem with those quotes. What they didn't say is we're going to be back to our best next year and buy all the best players and hire the best available manager in the world. I agree. So that's, that's why I think, and, and I, I agree with you, it is if, buts, and maybes, but it's if, buts, and maybes from both sides. You're, the difference is I'm just going to stay calm until it fails, essentially, where you're going to be angry <laughs> or frustrated until you're proven wrong. I'll but just be checked out, Terry. That's the thing. And a lot of fans will be checked out. Like, like I, 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 I hear what you're saying. And I don't think that it, success was ever going to be instant. I never said that. And I would be delusional to say that. However, when I'm looking at the market and I see that the managers are out there, is there any manager that I really, really, really personally want? No. But I know there is better options than Southgate. The Zerbi and Tuchel alone are better options than mm. him. Are these people that I strongly back? No, because I don't want uh, a Zerbi for certain reasons. I like things about him, but there's a reason why I don't want him. And yeah. I like things about Tuchel, but there's a reason why I don't want him. But at the end of the day, I will still take these two over, over Southgate because as, as as football managers and as coaches, they are miles ahead of this guy. But, but and if, I but again, if, if Southgate's the only one wanting to work within, willing to work within this structure, and they're not, because that's But why that's a different conversation, no that, But that's what I'm saying. But when we that's say available, but, it's available yes. with the parameters that Manchester United are setting for the person for the job. So really, they're not available because they don't fit the criteria. Yeah, but you don't know that, players. Lawless. Neither do I. If that is the condition, if they come out and say, basically, we hired... Obviously, no no, no football club announces that when they sign someone. But if rumours come out, comes out or leaks come out that no one wanted to take on the job with these uh, current uh, uh, rules, I should say, that Enio set for the new manager or, or, or just like the, the, the circumstances of the job, and Southgate was the only one accepted it, I'll be like, okay, I get it, because there was no one else that wanted it. But that is that. That's a very, very, very slim chance that that even happens. No, but we're just going by. Tuchel's what been working for United for a minute now. Sorry, say that again. No, I'm just saying we're just going by the facts of the the, the issues that yeah. they've had in the previous but, clubs. In but but I think I think that's the thing, though, Staffy. I understand the checking out thing. I, I get it. The reason why I disagree with doing that, and I say I say that you should be as my view is that United fans, even if you're not happy, be objectively supportive, and be as encouraging as possible because we don't know what we don't know. Man United fans, we didn't like the Glazers, ever. But it took a long time for us to completely and utterly not trust what the new board after Sir Alex Ferguson left were doing. And how I remember that is when LVG and Jose were announced as managers, there wasn't people checking out. The reason why people are checking out now is there's PTSD and there's a lot of sort of exhaustion from being poor for so long, having our hopes lifted as an, as an example. I feel like what you said earlier is right. I think it's one of those things where it's, we've got to wait and see. We don't know why Southgate's going to be. Is he genuinely the number one candidate or is he the best we could get under this new structure that over the, course of, over, the, over the course of time could end up yielding amazing results for us? I feel like Man United fans, you're never going to get everything you want. And I feel like if we all just start checking out as football fans, the second that we don't get something we want, 
there's a problem. And it's interesting because I saw a really good thread the other day and I wish I'd, I saved it and had the screenshots ready. And it was from somebody talking about uh, Bayern Munich, uh, by, uh, Borussia Dortmund fans. And it really resonated with me. I'm someone that sort of turned my back financially on Man United in a, in my own personal attempt to try and get rid of the Glazers. And I tried encouraging others to do it and it never took off. Fair play to everybody. But it spoke about how what they do in Germany is they will push back and argue and fight against decisions their board and directors make. Good, bad or indifferent. But they will support the team wholeheartedly, full-bloodedly every single game. And I'll find you the thread and share it with you because it was eye-opening to me. And I feel like we as Man United fans could learn something from that where I don't like this decision, but I am going to be up for it. Come on, boys, go and win the game. I feel like if we all just checked out every time a decision goes at the club we don't like, United would end up with no fans. <laughs> and that's no good either, is it? Like That isn't going to help us. And that's, I sometimes feel we've got to look at what we say and do and take it to the extremity to see how bad it could get. And I just don't believe in... I, listen, I agree with what you've said about Southgate, but I personally can't check out. What are you going to say, Sam?